All right, so I might just be paranoid. Okay, let me know in the comment section what you think. But I really strongly believe that the, I call them helpers, the people that you call when you need help, like mechanics and plumbers and electricians and the truck drivers and the railroad cart operators, the train conductors, the mail, the mail seems to be an issue. All these people that we depend on to get the things that we need or get the help that we need, they seem to be just disappearing, <laughs> right? There's less and less people getting into these trades. There's less and less people doing common jobs that we all depend on. And it seems that there's more and more problems in all of these areas. I remember when your vehicle was making noises, you could have, you'd have made a few calls, right? You'd make calls to a few different mechanics, but eventually you'd find one that could fit you in and they could take care of you that same day or the next day. And now it seems like if you call a mechanic, it's gonna be two, three weeks at least, at least one week. They're at least a week out, if not more. And if you have a problem, that week can make that little problem a much larger problem. Same thing with plumbers and electricians, you know. If it's a small problem, they just, they put you on the schedule and then all the people with the emergencies come first and you just keep getting kicked down the road, kicked down the road, like my sink is plugged, right? Well, you can live without a sink. All these people who water heaters are going out, the toilets don't work and it's a single bathroom, home, all these people, you know, all these people with bigger issues kind of go first. They get the priority and your sink just stays clogged until they can eventually get to it. And it seems like that's happening more and more and more and more often. And so in today's video, I wanna focus on things you need to buy to be prepared for the lack of help, really. The lack, we all seen the shipping shortages. We all have called mechanics and plumbers and people to help us and they have to schedule us way down the road. And so we need to take this on ourselves and we need to have what we need ahead of time right now while times are still really good. They're not really good, but they're better than they might be. We need to prepare now so that if it does get worse, we have minor inconveniences instead of real emergencies, okay? So in the description box down below, I will leave affiliate links to real items, like things that I find helpful, but I'm not going to talk about those things. I'm gonna speak in general because I don't want you buying what I need. I want you buying what you need, okay? And so today we're gonna to think about these situations, we're gonna think about the different things, and then you need to figure out what's best for you and what you personally need. But if you're just lost and don't know where to start, I will leave links in the description box down below. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is tools, okay? If your sink is clogged, you're gonna get kicked down the can, right? You're, you're gonna get kicked down, like you can live without that one sink. You have a kitchen sink, you can use the kitchen, or if you have your kitchen sinks clogged, you have a bathroom sink, like you can get by without a sink, you know? So you're gonna be the one that's kicked down, kicked down, kicked down. And so you need to be able to fix that yourself because you don't want a clogged sink turning into a sewer backup. You don't want your little problem turning into a bigger problem, right? And that's kind of what I fear. That's kind of the reason why I'm making this video. This is why I think about it all the time is because the little problems always start little. And if you fix them, it's not a big deal, right? It's just a small little problem. But the longer you go without Fixing that little problem, the bigger the problem gets, and eventually it is a emergency and you get pushed to the front of the line because your house is flooding, right? Your, your sewer's backing up, everything's backing up into your house, and now all of a sudden you are, we'll get to you today because your house is flooding or there's sewer everywhere, or you know, it's a, it's a big, huge emergency, and so now's the day they're gonna show up. And so having the right tools to prevent those things from happening, or like you have an outlet that it doesn't work. You know what I mean? You can live without one outlet. So you're gonna get 
push down the road, push down the road. They're going to work on the water heaters. They're going to work on the heat. If it's the middle of winter, they're going to be working on the furnaces. They're going to be working, like the electricians are going to prioritize the people that are most desperate, right? Well, then when that outlet that doesn't work, there, it arcs and it starts a fire inside your wall. Now you're first in line. <laughs> Congratulations. Your little problem got big enough to where you're front of the line now. They're going to come out. They're going to fix that right away. But now you have to pay for the damage that the fire created inside that wall. And so being able to fix all the little things yourself, not having to rely on electricians, plumbers, maintenance, uh, mechanics, doing all the, changing your own oil, doing all the things, the preventative maintenance that prevents the bigger problems. If you can do that yourself, you're not gonna need them in the first place, right? If you take care of your stuff, the problem's not gonna get large enough to where you even need a plumber or an electrician in the first place. And so think about the tools you need, think about the problems that you have experienced, that you don't want to experience, and how do you maintain those things so that the problem doesn't get big enough. The second thing is outdoor gear. Now, I recently did a video talking about the difference between camping, preparedness, and self-reliance, and I talked about how very similar they are. They're very different things, but they're very similar. And outdoor gear is one of those things where if you have a luggable loo for when you're out camping and your toilet stops working, you can use that luggable loo as a toilet until the plumber comes and fixes it or until you figure out what you need to do to fix it yourself, right? It's a minor inconvenience. It's not what you want to do, but at least you have something, right? You, you, right now, you took the time to figure out what you needed so that when the problem occurred, it's a slight inconvenience. It's not as comfortable as you want it to be, but you at least can get by, right? You're not just out of luck, you know what I mean? Or like if your sink is clogged and you don't want anything backing up and you're scared that your plumbing is messed up, you can use your basins and your buckets that you use for washing dishes while you're out camping or sponge bathing or taking baths the way that you do out camping and you don't have to worry about your plumbing getting worse. Uh, if your stove breaks, <clears throat> right, appliances seem to be on super, super back order, and they won't get shipped for months. Some people are waiting like six months to a year for refrigerators and stoves and dishwashers. <clears throat> and so if you have a camp stove, you can use that camp stove to get by for even six months maybe. <laughs> and so you can use that camp stove and you're not just out of luck, right? This is the thing I want you to think about. What can't you live without? And how can you find a camping equivalent so that you can get by and things aren't going to be just disastrous? It's going to be a minor setback. It's going to be a minor inconvenience instead of an entire, like an emergency, like what am I going to do, right? That's what I'm trying to help you avoid. Next one is gardening tools. Now, even if you live in an apartment, a tomato plant will grow next to a window. Tomatoes grow very easily. And that tomato plant can be tomatoes, uh, pizza sauce, tomato sauce, uh, pasta sauce for spaghetti, uh, ketchup, if you want to learn how to make your own ketchup. That tomato plant can really be, benefit you a lot. And if you have the capabilities of having a larger garden where you can grow other vegetables, that's things that you don't have to rely on the grocery store having. We've all seen the grocery store shelves empty because of shipping or because of rioting and looting, to be honest. There's stores shutting down because of the events taking place. And so we wanna make sure that we have what we need. And so if you have gardening tools and you can preserve some of the gardening fruits and vegetables that you've collected or that you've grown, it's going to put you at ease. Again, it's, it's not going to be, you're not going to have the variety the grocery store has. You're not going to have the abundance the grocery store has. But again, it's, it's a minor inconvenience. It's a minor setback. It's not ideal, but it's always better than nothing. Next is cooking tools. 
So in my area, another problem that's made me think about making this video is a lot of restaurants are just shutting down, like fast food restaurants. Uh, Papa John's shut down, Pizza Hut shut down, uh, Wendy's shut down from lack of help. They, they couldn't keep enough employees staffed to run them and they had to close up shop because they just, they didn't have the people they needed to work the counter and the cooks and the register and everything. And so being able to cook your own meals. If you like Wendy's burgers, learn how to make burgers that are very similar at home. If you like pizza, learn how to make pizza at home, you know. Uh, buy some extra pizza crust. You can get Pillsbury pizza crust or you can make your own pizza crust. Tomato sauce. You may have grown your own tomatoes and you can make your own tomato sauce. If you learn how to do these things at home, you're not so dependent and so reliant on those places staying open, being open. Uh, we can make pizza 3 o'clock in the morning, right? We don't have to depend on them being open or being staffed or anything. It could be a middle, it could be a blizzard out, zero travel, and we can still have pizza here at home because we have all the ingredients. And so think about that. What do you like eating the most? And what tools and kitchen appliances do you need to make those things from scratch? Second one is cleaning tools. Okay, if you're going to be gardening and maintaining your home and your vehicles and gar well, gardening and cooking, basically everything I just said. You're going to be creating a mess, right? It's going to create a mess. You're going to be spending more time at home doing things. You're going to create more dishes. You're going to create, you don't want to take the grease from the frying pan and put it down the drain because that will cause a plumbing problem. So you want to have cleaning supplies, cleaning knowledge on how to make sure that everything stays clean so that you can continue to use it over and over and over again. You want to keep things healthy. You don't want to be getting sick because of mold and mildew and different things. And so having the right cleaning tools is very important. And speaking of mold and mildew and health, you need medical supplies. Okay, I will leave a link down below to Jace Medical where you can get antibiotics. Uh, they get mailed right to your house. It's a great option. It is an affiliate link, so I do get a small kickback, but I think it's really nice to have, especially with the shipping crisis that is happening with medications. Uh, other medications would be ibuprofen, Tylenol, Advil, uh, Band-Aids, splints. There's a lot of different things that you might have. If you have a bad knee, you might want to buy crutches just to have on hand. You know what I mean? Because the more people that need crutches and they, if the hospital runs out of crutches, you have your own at home. If you have neck problems, if the hospital runs out of neck braces, you have your own at home. I got what I need at home. And so even if the hospital can't provide it, I still got what I need, right? The next one is food and water. Having actual food, actual water, again, Grocery stores are shutting down a whole bunch of Walmarts, shut up, shut shop because of riots and looting and loss of sales and they just can't afford to stay open. Having that food and water will give you the time you need to find a different option. It'll give you the time you need to figure out where you can go, what you can do. And so if you have a week's worth of food, just stored if you have a week's worth of water because your sink is backed up or something bad happens to your plumbing. If you have a week's worth or maybe even two weeks worth, that gives you two weeks to not only not worry about it if you only have to wait two weeks, but it gives you two weeks to figure out an alternative option, right? It gives you two weeks to figure out what I'm gonna do to get more food or where can I shop that's close by that I don't have to drive forever to go get to? Where are the local grocery stores? Where is this? Where is that? Right? Instead of how am I going to feed my family tomorrow? It's I'm just going to worry about this tomorrow because I have more than enough food. I have a week to figure this out. So let's just calm down today. Let's deep depress and just think things through. Tomorrow we'll figure out where to grocery shop and then maybe on Friday I'll run to the wherever we figure out and I'll restock on supplies, right? It's, it's a minor inconvenience, it's a minor setbacks instead of in a huge emergency. 
Next one is, again, infrastructure, right? The electricians, plumbers, they not only work on your home, they work on the entire power grid. They work on the plumbing that's in the roads and the streets, like everything that we don't see inside our home, that water is coming from somewhere and it's going somewhere, right? Those little sewer covers you see in the streets, plumbers have to go down in there to figure this stuff out. The power lines that you see down the roads, electricians have to figure that out. And the less there are to do that, the more and more problems are gonna present themselves. And so again, if the power continues to go out, do you have a way of entertaining yourself? Do you have a way of passing the time that doesn't involve the TV, a computer, the, a screen, basically? Uh, if the internet goes down, because again, the internet is all part of an infrastructure, the internet goes down, can you still pay your bills? Can you still entertain yourself? Can you still do what you need to do? A lot of people think of TV as TV still. You know, I'll just watch TV because TV used to be on an antenna and it just, if you had electricity, you had TV. Well, now it's Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. All of those are dependent on the internet. If you don't have internet, you don't have streaming. And so what are you going to do to pass the time? You're gonna need board games and puzzles and books and non-electronic devices to help you pass the time. And so I will leave some links again in the description box down below of specific things I think you might like, specific things that I think help me the most. But again, I don't want you buying what helps me. I want you thinking about what will help you. So thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you on my next video.